hello everyone welcome to grow Med. welcome back and in this video we will be discussing some important images from the gynecology so ops and gynec important images we will cover in this uh, video so it will be a quick review of all those things uh, because in the last minute revision it will be helpful for you that all the videos are at one place and you know reading the pdfs and all is tiring so you can just watch this video and in 10 to 12 minutes we'll try to discuss a lot of important images so that you'll not be feeling tiring also okay so uh, the main motive is just to make the uh, studies easier and simpler okay so uh, the first image it is very important and asked multiple time asked in relation with the clinical case okay so this is the appearance famous appearance seen on the usg called snowstorm appearance seen in the high form mole okay so it is a type of a complete mole and what happens in this is there will be a formation of the placental tissue but the fetus is not formed okay so it is a kind of a gestational trophoblastic disease so it is an example of this uh, gestational trophoblastic disease and questions are asked on the stages so this hydratiform mole can cause placental uh, choriocarcinoma sorry it will be causing choreo cancer and questions are asked on this stages and also questions are asked in relation with this image that they will be giving if direct one liner is asked then it will be quite easier for us to identify and if clinical case is also given it will be very easy you just need to read at the clinical case describing that a female with uterus which will be more than the period of gestation hemat m hematemesis sorry okay bolte increase in the vomiting uh, because of the beta hcg increased levels beta hcg levels will be increased and these all things you will be finding in the clinical case okay so this is an important image a uh, snowstorm appearance then moving on to the next image which is the ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome so this uh, image you can see here that there are multiple big follicles present and these follicles are covering the whole ovary okay so they are present in the stoma as well as the cord and these are like variable size so by looking at this appearance you can come to know that it is the ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome and most commonly seen with the IVF okay and in this condition another important thing is that the levels of the estrogen will be increased so it will be a very high level of estrogen then the next image uh, I think everyone already know this image this is quite famous but everyone might have heard about this okay so PCOS necklace of pearl appearance as you can see here that a small small follicles multiple follicles present around the periphery so in ovarian hyperstimulation it was covered in the whole uterus uh, sorry ovary so you can see here that whole ovary is covered with this large follicles but in PCOS it will be small follicles of the similar size so you can see that all these uh, follicles they are of similar size and they are arranged in the periphery giving a pearl of a pearl necklace like appearance okay then a uh, pcos to pata hai sabko that uh, they will be giving the case and if case then they'll be describing hirsutism then young female she will be mostly given 20 to 25 years of age and amenorrhea all these things will be described in the question then moving on to the Asherman syndrome so as you can see here this is also a very uh, famous question repeat question asked multiple time okay so Asherman syndrome you can see here that filling defect on the HSG, HSG. so this is a HSG finding and you can see the filling defect and uh, the clinical case described will be that a uh, female after her labor she had undergone um, uh, curatage d and c and after that she uh, presents with prime secondary amenorrhea so what will be the diagnosis asherman syndrome okay simple hai asherman syndrome uh, agar clinical case bhi aayega to it is very easy to identify just look at the hint words or the buzzwords given like labor then after that uh, d and c and prime secondary amenorrhea so if you see these three things in the question and in the options if amenorrhea is given then go with that then moving on so this is an image of the adenomyosis so adenomyosis or adenomyomatosis so what does this stands for so it is also called as the endometrium uh, sorry lake of blood because the endometrial tissue which should be present this is the uterus so the endometrial tissue which 
is present here it has gone into the muzzle layer causing this appearance and this is also a very famous question okay so it is a kind of the endometriosis so if a clinical case is described then it will be described like dysmenorrhea dyspareunia all these, these things will be described in the question and along with that the uterus size will be increased so uterus size will be increased and when you do the pregnancy test it will be negative but still the uterus is uh, size is increased like that okay then this was about the adenomyosis then about the vesicovaginal fistula so this is also a quite famous question and a repeat topic and this is the most common type of the fistula vesicovaginal fistula as you can see here that between the bladder and the vagina there is formation of this fistula okay so this fistula can be formed between the between the vagina and the uterus some uh, urethra sometimes and it can also be formed between the rectum and the vagina like this okay but this one is the most common type so it is asked frequently in the exam then another important question which you must remember from here is that to find out the fistulas which type it is we will be using three swab test okay so we will be placing the cottons in the vagina and we will be injecting the dye then this image so you can appreciate in this image that we are giving a cruciate incision for the Bartholin abscess okay so this is also quite important question the uh, questions are asked like clinical case or they can describe the causative organism of the Bartholin abscess and what management you will be doing so the management will be this cruciate incision which we will be giving then next image imperforate hymen and this is the most common cause of the cryptomenorrhea so treatment is the cruciate incision as you can see here that the vagina it has something bluish bulging membrane so this is very very famous question asked in the fmg uh, for the primary amenorrhea i had already uploaded the video on this cases clinical cases from the obg and in that i have discussed discuss the three important cases related to the primary amenorrhea so the link is given in the description box so do watch that videos also because it will help you to boost your preparation so this is the imperforate hymen and you can see here this bluish bulging membrane so they will be describing that a 16 or a 17 year female she is coming with a complaint of primary amenorrhea on examination you can see this bluish membrane on the vagina bluish membrane on the vagina and uh, what will be the diagnosis so it will be the cryptomenorrhea or they can give the imperforate hymen then treatment is the cru cruciate incision so questions are asked like describing the whole case and they'll ask the treatment okay then moving on this is also a repeat uh, image and the questions are asked to the sequence of the blood supply to the uterus okay so let's look at the question asked uh, so it will be going uh, so it will be starting from the uterine artery then uterine will be branching into the arcuate artery then radial then basal and then spiral okay so the four most important which you must remember is this one two three and the fourth one so fourth will be the uh, uh, last artery spiral artery which will be supplying the endometrium okay so this is the sequence and frequently questions are asked on this sequence then moving on to the intrauterine fetal demise so you can see here this uh, sign this is called as the lemon sign and this indicates intrauterine fetal demise and this uh, is important from the psm point of view also okay this image then this is also a repeat image and these are called as the canman cannulas and the usage of the size so these are the uh, different colored and different size cannulas and uh, we will be using the cannula according to the period of gestation like if it is eight size then we will be using it in eight week of gestation because questions are asked like that the clinical cases that a female she is eight a week of gestation so which size cannula you will be using so can can man cannula so it will be six okay sorry eight because uh, it is eight no so it will be eight then moving on this is the image of the fibroid as you can uh, appreciate here that the 
a smooth muzzle rolled like appearance is seen in the muzzle of the uterus and this is the famous finding seen with the leomyoma or the fibroid so you need to look at the classification of the fibroid so here it is the classification of the fibroid pedunculated submucosal fibroid then intramural then submucosal subserosal and pedunculated subserosal so mainly these are classified into the intramural intramural which will be present uh, right inside the muscle okay so this is the intramural uh, fibroid then if its body the fibroid body is situated more towards the mucosa of this uterus it will be called as the submucosal and if the body of the uh, fibroid is uh, situated more towards the serosa then it is called as the subserosal fibroid okay so simple hai uh, remember karna intramural means you remember that muscle intramural aayega to m se muscle so in between the muscle layer okay like that then uh, before intramural yahan par upar likh lena mucosal the mucosal will be coming into the uterine cavity and serosa serosa means we know that serosal layer jo hai it will be covering the abdominal layer so you just uh, mark ki ye abdomen ke uh, touch mein aayega okay this serosa then moving on to the next images so these are also three most important images and this images are asked in the clinical cases and you can expect one question from this so uh, in every year these questions are asked on the uh, bacterial vaginosis pid then uh, the pelvic inflammatory disease then trichomoniasis okay candidiasis so you need to look at all these things matlab uh, if they give the clinical case and also the treatment because treatment uh, questions are asked that in which we will be giving which a drug and the dose okay so as you can see here that in this it is a gray whitish color fluid and this is most commonly seen with the bacterial vaginosis okay and the classical finding seen with this bacterial vaginosis is the clue cells and the fishy odor okay so if these thing, things are described in the gynec case fishy odor clue cells then fishy odor then uh, go with the bacterial vaginosis because that one only will be the answer then moving on to the candidiasis so you can see here the curdy white appearance of the uh, secretions vaginal secretions and see say curdy white okay so simple hai candidiasis ka because you can just remember one thing that candida causes whitish appearance matlab whitish discharge karega ye cause तो इफ एट ऑल इट इज़ प्रेजेंट इन द ईयर तब भी ये वाइट डिस्चार्ज करेगा एंड इफ इट इज़ प्रेजेंट इन द यूटरस इट विल बी गिविंग वाइट डिस्चार्ज देन वेन एवर यू सी दिस थिंग दैट वाइट मटीरियल कर्डी वाइट डिस्चार्ज इज सीन देन इफ ऑप्शन में कैंडिडियासिस है कैंडिडा का कॉज है देन गो विथ दैट आंसर देन मूविंग ऑन दिस इमेज सो as you can see here that the secretions are green yellowish green color and the secretions are seen with the trichomoniasis okay and then moving on to this image so this is the image of the pelvis and frequently questions are asked giving on the shape of the pelvis and uh, this is the female type which is there and you can see here that inlet is the oval shape then patipaloid so it will be oval shape and this one is the least common variety which is seen this is the rare type of pelvis then android so as you can see here that inlet is a uh, in the form of the heart so this is uh, the male type of the pelvis and anthropoid so you can see here that this is also oval but the ap diameter is more and this is the anthropoid okay so these are the four important pelvis types which you must know and you need to able to identify it so this is how you will be identifying it based on the inlet it will be easier then this is the uh, placenta image well uh, velamentous cord and as you can see here that these blood vessels they have split earlier itself so before insertion on the placenta only they have inserted and the most common complication seen with this is the vaza previa okay so this gynec images and all i have uh, 
completely discussed all these things in the revision videos so do watch that revision videos also because it will surely be helping you in the last minute revisions because reading notes is so tiring and i can understand that so uh, what you can do is just if when you're free in your free times open this video or listen to it and in 15 20 minutes you will be uh, learning most of the important high yield topics and it will not be tiring also matlab ki it will be interesting for you all okay so uh, this image so these two are also quite important images in relation to the twin pregnancies and we all know that twin pregnancies monochorionic and dichorionic so these are the ecg findings which will help us to differentiate between the mono and the di so see this sign this is called as the lambda sign and this uh, is seen in case of the dichorionic diamniotic twin okay and this is the twin peak sign and this is seen in case of monochorionic diamniotic okay so these are the important usg findings which you must remember and you will be able to identify it okay so that's it in this video guys so i will be posting the part 2 video soon in which we will be discussing more of the uh, other important images for the gynecology and uh, yeah so that's it in this video thank you so much for watching this video all the best for the fmg i hope you will be excelling this exam this is dr padmini your mentor for the fmg like the video share it with your friends and if you are new to gromet subscribe to gromet join with me on the telegram uh, where you can find more high yield mnemonics than important topics flash cards all you need for the fmg so thank you so much guys once again bye bye